Today we're going to be talking about the video editing software called Dehancer and why I think this is going to be an, an important tool for many people out there. What's up? I know, I've been gone a while. Big life moments have happened. In fact, I'm going to show a couple things here. So that's what's happened. It's been pretty exciting. You've probably seen there are tons of people out there right now that are trying to emulate film, trying to figure it out, whether it's through color correction on their video format or trying to figure it out on a film, uh, like actually buying film cameras and going out and taking pictures. Well, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a cheat code. This thing is absolutely crazy to use and then at the end of it i'm going to give my final opinion and who it's for now for everyone out there who's wondering dehancer did reach out to me and they wanted me to review the software so that's what they're going to get today full review it's pretty cool now this software is for people that are looking to emulate film so when you look at the big cinema cameras and you look at things that are on the movie screens you see like a really beautiful romantic kind of look to the picture and me personally, I've always wondered how that's done. Like, how do they get the lights to look so cool? If it's an evening shot, how do they get the candles and lamps to bloom and glow so much? So those are types of things that Dehancer can help you solve. But in addition to that, it's, you know, more of a cheat code for being able to color grade and apply multiple different looks and feels to your film or your video uh, without going over the top. And if you're like me, there is a lot of color grading out there. I'm not the best colorist, but this thing just adds a quick and easy way for me to add new color to my video, especially if I'm shooting an S-Log3 and provide a whole different dynamic of how I edit and will make movies here in the future. Movies, films, whatever it may be, YouTubes. So some of the features that we're gonna be going over today is the film look. We're gonna be going over the print profiles, which is absolutely crazy. We're going to be going over film compression, which is adjusting with the highlights, adding grain in a realistic way, and then bloom inhalation, which is a big feature that a lot of people are working on. And if you watch any other reviews on Dehancer, that's kind of a big talking point here. So let's dive into it. All right, so let's just dive right into the software. The software is designed to make it look as if it is a cinema camera, and there's several different profiles and different effects that we can apply to each film strip so it looks really really unique and you can use it for any type of storytelling to evoke emotion or that can help you tell your story better. So when we dive into it, I'm going to go over three clips today. Those three clips are going to give you kind of a contrast of things. We're going to do an outdoor daylight scene. We're going to do an indoor daylight scene, but yet it's still pretty dark and moody. And then we're going to go to a nighttime scene where we can see some candlelight, which is going to exemplify some of the effects that are built into the software. Dehancer makes it really easy to use. Not only do they provide a manual so that you can learn about how this software actually is supposed to work within your editing program, today we're looking at Final Cut. Now, everything that you're about to see is shot on the Sony a7 IV and it's an S-Log. So I've built this film around that profile but it does allow you to really adjust depending on your camera or the look that you're going for. So the way we're gonna do it is actually drag and drop, just like any other effect. You can also do this with an adjustment layer, but you're gonna go in, once you have the effect downloaded, you're gonna go into your effects, then you're gonna go into your Dehancer Pro. I'm gonna drag that onto my actual footage, and you can see that Dehancer Pro is already enabled and it's already adjusted up here, but I have it under Rec. 709. And like I'd mentioned, I'm shooting in S-Log with the Sony a7 IV, so I'm gonna actually choose the camera I wanna go into. I'm gonna choose Sony, I'm gonna go to my a7 IV, and then I'm gonna go to the S-Log ISO 800, and boom, already corrected. So to me, this is already a huge win because it takes so much of that color grading out. Now, all of the editing I'm doing is straight from the software. I'm not going into color wheels uh, or color adjustments within Final Cut. I'm just editing simply on the software Dehancer. Now, as we go into it, we can adjust for the exposure. We can adjust for the temperature, see if we want to warm it up a bit. You know, you can start to play with some of these items. Now, one thing that Dehancer did that is absolutely so cool is that they've actually added a whole bunch of different film stocks. So if you're a big film fan, you will have the pleasure of sorting through exactly what you like to 
use. But if you look here, you have a range of different films that you could use. Types of Fujifilm, you can go to Kodak. For me, I like to do the Kodak Ektachrome 100. This one I think looks very realistic, especially for this outdoor shot. It's super beautiful, love to use it. For the film compression, this is something that helps to beat down the highlights. So you can either play with it, you can bring it up, you can bring it back. You can see some of the sky and the clouds have already been adjusted so you can see all the way through it. So I'm gonna bring that up, but not completely, because I want the focus to be more on the flowers and the sun than anything else. The next thing I'm gonna start to adjust with is the expand. As you can see, the expand here is on. Uh, this is something that adjusts either the dark areas or you can bring it back up to bring in some of the highlights within the actual footage that you've shot. For me, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. Print view, now the print is pretty spectacular. This is something as if like you were taking a screenshot of whatever you have here, put it onto paper, print it out, and that's what the final image looks like. And so they've added a couple different features that you can choose from, uh, including like a Kodak glossy paper, or I like the Kodak 2383 print film, but either way, you can start to click through them, see what you like the most. For me, I like the 2383 like I just mentioned. Now you can start to play with some of the target white, you can adjust with that, play with some of the exposure levels, depending on what you're trying to do, and so forth from there. Now, Dehancer really prides itself on the film grain. What they say on Dehancer is that the film grain is actually embedded into the film itself. So unlike other editing softwares, uh, they claim that it just kind of rests on top of your image. Well, in this case, what they've done is figured out a way to really embed it and make it look more realistic, like you would see in the big Hollywood cinema. Film. So here I have it enabled, I have a size one, but if you pull it all the way up, you can see it gets grainier every time you adjust it. But for this instance, I like to bring it down. You can also add the different amounts of grain that you'd like to see. So if you want it very old school TV looking, you know, you can, you can play with it a little bit. Next in order from the grain, is the halation. And this is something that Dehancer really prides itself on as well. And there's one other bloom which we'll get to in a second. But halation is kind of the red fringe you may see around certain Hollywood films, around lanterns, bulbs, but it's this very unique color refraction, if you wanna say. But the way you can really see it the most is I can enable it, you don't really see much of a difference. But if you go to the mask mode, you start to see where the red really pops off within the images and how it can be applied. So if I take the mask off, you can see it looks a little bit more dreamy. I can pull it back down. It gets, uh, that red starts to really creep into the actual video edit itself. Now for the bloom piece, like I said before, this is another feature that they've really added in here and taken a lot of extra work. If I simply go down here and hit enable, you're definitely gonna see it pop right off the screen. But again, if I go back to the mask mode and come up here to amplify, you can see where it really starts to highlight in. So if I were to take this mask mode off, come back up here to the amplify, you can really start to bring it in, you can dial it up, whatever you need to do uh, to make your film appear the way you want it. But for me, I really like it sitting around 34, especially in this light. To me, that just looks perfect when it comes to dreamy, but not overkill. Now I know that's just a ton to take in, so I'm only gonna show you two more clips and I'm gonna speed through them so it's not just a drag of time for you to watch this video. The next one that we're gonna look at is from the Pantheon. Now I like this clip because not only do you have the light coming in from the top, but it already looks like something out of the Da Vinci Code. So again, I'm gonna pull in Dehancer, I'm gonna drag it onto my scene, automatically kicks in Rec 709, so I'm gonna select the camera that I was shooting with, Sony a7 IV, S-Log, boom. Already got some major adjustments to it. It's already dark and moody. But I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit so we can start to dive into it. From the film look, for me, I'm gonna go to the Kodak Supra 100 and see what that looks like. I like this little tint that it has going on. For me, I think that's great. Expanding the black point, so I can either bring that in so I can bring up more of the highlights, or I can bring it down and make it more contrasty so that it appears dark and moody. Uh, and again, it's all up to the creative choice. As I'd mentioned before, I like to go with the Kodak 2383. The grain is on. I'm gonna bring it up to about a two to three. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna skip the halation on this one, but I am gonna go with the bloom. The bloom allows it to soften up the edges of the white, 
allows a little bit more of this light channeling in to shine and then you can see people here it looks a little bit more dreamy or something that you'd see on the da vinci code um, where people shine out a little bit more and finally we are on to the night scene the night scene this one we're probably going to see the most dramatic usage of how this uh how dehancer works so let's dive right into it so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to drag dehancer onto the night scene and start to make the edits itself. So here I'm gonna go choose my camera and boom, we've already got the edit in place. Then I'm gonna bring up the exposure because it's, you know, I don't want it to be too dark here, but now you can start to see the flame a little bit more, but I'm not overexposing the flame. Uh, and I have some of these lights in the background. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna choose the Kodak. I'm gonna go portrait 400 this time. I like the little green tint that it adds. I think that's great because it complements the leaves here, especially with it being nighttime outside. I'm gonna skip the film compression this time because it's nighttime scene. I really like the contrast in here. The black points I think are okay, especially because it's at night and I'm gonna be adjusting the profile here. So I'm gonna have to make some color corrections here because it already amplified the dark. So I'm gonna bring up the exposure just slightly so we can get that back into it. I'm gonna add some of the film grain because I think that adds to a cinematic scene itself. Lastly, I'm gonna show you what halation looks like and bloom looks like in this scene. So I'm gonna enable the halation here and then I'm gonna to go to the mask mode. So the mask mode, you can see that there's red fringing in certain areas, but again, I'm gonna to go to the global diff diffusion, bring that up and you can start to see that it highlights a lot of these areas. If I bring off the mask mode, you can see that there is kind of a red fringe around all of these highlighted areas. And of course, you can start to really adjust the global diffusion or you can amplify it just to see what works best for you. And here's an on off scenario again. Lastly, I'm going to come into the bloom. The bloom, again, I'm going to go into the enable. You can already see it looks pretty dreamy. I'm going to go into the mask mode, see where all of these sections of the bloom are hitting the most. And then I'm gonna also look at how I can bring this down. Do I want it all the way up or do I not? So I'm gonna bring down the amplified section of it because I don't want it to be overkill. Then it starts to really form, make the colors that I want. So now that we're done doing the actual edit here, what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna show you some before and after of what it looks like with and without the actual dehancer images. So let's get to that. All right, so now that we're done, who is this for? In my opinion, I think this is for somebody that's heavily entrenched into the film industry that is looking to have an easier way to film edit. Now, I am not that person at all. I am more of the amateur colorist. I have my self-correcting templates that I have put on my presets and I do very small modifications. So this software, if you're an amateur like me, also helps you out. It actually gets you straight to the point, allows you to make small incremental adjustments that make it a world of difference when you get to the final edit. Now the pros to having this software is that it's easier to have color grading done, especially if you're looking for that cinematic, really pro quality, like you're in the movies kind of look. I think this is such an awesome thing to do. It's easy to use, you can simply make adjustments and it just snaps onto your timeline pretty simply. Now, one of the cons to having this software is that it really bogs down your computing process. And I have a MacBook Pro M1, and this thing still slows it down. I'm using Final Cut, which is a native software. And if you remember when the M1s came out, they were bragging about how 4K video inside of your Final Cut is gonna run and play back smoother. This one adds so much computing process that it actually lags my 4K. So that was kind of the downfall, not a big deal, but you know, if that is something that is big for you. The other piece is that this is about $500. Now people may wonder, hey, maybe I can go and buy someone's preset and it gives me a film look. That's great. But Dehancer does actually offer like an a la carte kind of option. So you can go pick different things on the website rather than doing a one-time purchase for it all. So if there's a certain feature that you saw, that's also an added benefit. You don't have to necessarily go with the full package 
or not. They make it easy for you to choose what you're lagging, if you're really good at color grading, but you want the bloom, you know, maybe that's something you wanna balance out and that's something you can consider. So now that we've reached the end of the video and you've seen the editing, the before and the after, you've seen how these effects worked, my opinion of this software is that it is a pretty dang cool piece of software. I think anyone that does download this and start to use it, you can really come up with some creative images and you can produce a film that looks so cool and unique and kind of make it your own. Especially with a lot of these uh, newer creatives coming out, everyone's really going for this retro look. This not only adds the retro look, but it really gives you a true film quality look. So in my opinion, I really like the software. So if you have any questions, I would go onto YouTube, I would research everything that's out there like I did, but you can also go to Dehancer's website and really skim through all of the information and they provide a lot of information before you make the purchase so you can be well informed. Now, if you're actually into film and wanna go out and take still shots, you haven't invested into a camera and you haven't invested into film, well, next week I'm gonna be showing what it would be like to edit on Lightroom, so stay tuned for that. If you're looking for just mobile photography, they do have an app for photo and video editing. This is a great app to use and it gives you so many of the different effects that are built right into this Final Cut software itself. So that wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining in. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like this video if you truly did get some information out of it. And of course, I invite you to subscribe. Would love to hear from you in the future. With that, we'll see you soon.